Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's session today, which will be covering why only those salespeople who invest in their own development will survive in the future, or why only those salespeople who invest in their own sales development will survive in the future. Now, we're just waiting for a few people to join, a few more um, uh, attendees, so please bear with us. Now, while we're waiting, if, if I could get people just to jump on the chat, um, chat little box thing and just let, let us know where you're all from, uh, please. So, um, yeah, so I know we've got a few people from different countries. So a lot of the audience will be from the APAC region, but it'd be lovely to hear if, if everyone can jump on the, the chat facility and let us know where you're all from while we're waiting. Uh, great. Brisbane, John Lockton. Great to have you here, mate. Sean Walsh. Fantastic. Melbourne. Okay, so I'm reading that straight out. Melbourne. Uh, Melbourne. Uh, lots of people from Melbourne and Sydney. Okay, good, good, good. As I mentioned, most of our audience will be from these parts of the world, even though there are some people that are, are on over in the UK, which is really good. Um, late for you guys, but we appreciate you joining. All right, we'll give it a probably another 30 seconds. I wait for you guys to join. I got uh, Ron Reid from Sydney. Welcome. Tom Langley, yeah, no, I figured it was Sydney unless Sydney changed its name recently. <laughs> no worries. Very good. So just while we're waiting again, I, I'm, I'm really thrilled to have with us today a really special guest. Um, he, he's, he's attended a couple of my other sessions today. Um, I'll be interviewing John Smyber to discover, I guess, why why is it the uh, why? So we're going we're to explore why why salespeople should uh, should be sort of trimming up their um, their sales experience or, or improving that particular section uh, component. So give us uh, another ten seconds, and we're going to make a start. Okay. All right, let's go. So. Um, first, we're going to do a bit of an introduction to myself and, uh, and of course, our special guest. Um, we're going to be covering why our skilled sales and salespeople are coming harder to find. Um, what is it? What's the catalyst? What, what's the changing um, element with, with it to, to, to what's caused this? Uh, why should salespeople invest in their own sales development? Um, again, that's the reason why, you know, what, 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 what not the, the necessarily the push behind it, but just the, the common sense reason to why people should be doing that. Um, and that's great that we know the reasons why, but, but we also need to look at how, how should salespeople actually go about improving their core skills and capacity, capability, right? What is it they need to be doing, right? So moving on. Um, so look, um, just some ha housekeeping rules. Please keep your webinar on silent. Um, or your microphone on silent, if that's, uh, if you may, and if you hear me mumbling, it is 5 a.m. here in uh, in the Philippines where I'm based. Um, should have mentioned that before, I'm here in the Philippines. And um, yeah, so, uh, so let's keep our microphones on mute. And throughout the webinar, we will be activating several polls. Um, look, prior to each key point, um, Please um, be as, I guess, interactive as possible with, on that, on those particular points. It'd be really great to, uh, yeah, the more interactive I can have the whole audience, the better the session will be for everyone, okay? All right. Right, moving forward. And we'll do a bit of a wrap up and a Q&A and there's some, there's some resources I'd like to share with you at the end as well. Okay, moving forward. So introducing myself uh, really quickly, I'm the co-founder of MatCam Prospecting. We're a high-end um, sales enablement demand gen agency for tech enterprise companies such as Oracle, um, security companies such as Checkpoint. Um, we have, or I personally have around about 18 years of sales enablement exposure, uh, always learning, always, always making mistakes, but um, yeah, really, uh, really feel I've had, I had a number of years and seen the evolutions over the years of, of how sales enablement has changed. I'm also the author of a couple of books. Um, you might have come across, I've made 250,000 calls. This is what I learned. Um, very simple read. Uh, one of my first books, not, not the best one put together, but uh, in honesty, if you're just starting the game and, and then it, although cold calling sort of moving away from the industry, it's a more of a warm calling approach. Definitely worth having a look at it if you're, if you're starting, wanting to get past those jitters of picking up the phone. Um, and then there's perfecting, um, 
which um, is quite a recent one for me. It's been rewritten a number of times due to errors from um, myself, design teams, but there's some useful stuff in there on, on finding the right types of clients. So if you're a salesperson and you need some sort of checklist to go through to work out what you need to be doing um, to find the right perfect fit client, um, this could this could help you. Right? I'd recommend it. It's a very quick, quick read. You can get a you can get it on Amazon. You can get it from you can get it as a um, not an audible yet, but as a uh, as a what do you call it as a as an Amazon read. Um, and it's I believe it's only ninety nine cents at the moment. So yeah, go go and go and take a look. Um, moving on. Okay, so I want to introduce to you our special guest. Oh, I am so thrilled, John, to have you here today. Um, John has invested over thirty eight years as a successful sales leader across multiple. Um, multiple locations over the world, multiple large tech companies. Uh, he's also the co-founder of both SMA and Sales Leader Forums. And uh, his recent book, he's the co-author of The Wentworth Prospect. Um, I absolutely love this book, John. I've, um, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not finished yet. I'm 75% of the way through. And it's one of those reads or audibles, listens, that when you, when you start going through it the story is just really enjoyable you can't keep your ears off it or you can't keep your eyes off it that's it, it, it's a very compelling story about a, a sales um i guess sales professional that needs to learn her way across the ranks of, of of closing a deal right in a very complex situation so yeah john great to have you on board welcome and uh, I, I in terms of the introduction to your book i know you can do a much better job than me so uh yeah i'll, I'll give that part to you welcome Thank you very much. I, uh, I think you did a great job. Um, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, uh, it, is a, it is a very readable, exciting, exciting sort of book. It's a novel. And, and I've got to say, a lot of people have been reading it who are not in the sales fraternity and they're just reading it right. as a novel. So they're loving it. Very good. All right, um, great. Yeah, go, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was, I was just say it will, uh, it, it will. For those that really are good at selling, it'll consolidate, consolidate what you uh, what you know and and will fine tune your sales capability. For those that are really new to selling, this book will it's the best way, I believe, writing a novel about sales that will really teach people what selling is all about. I said, everyone, go out and buy Wentworth Prospect. <laughs> it's uh, definitely worth definitely worth checking out. Now, um, we do have a couple more stragglers joining on board now, John. So A lot of names uh, out there I know that you've just listed. Yeah. Fantastic. Good to see you all. Good turnout today. Now, um, well, let's get started. So let's launch the first poll. <clears throat> now, the first point we're going to be talking about uh, is around the skilled seasoned salespeople catalyst. What's changed, right? So why are skilled salespeople uh, becoming harder to find? Our first poll is going to launch in a few seconds. So we want to understand what your biggest challenge is when it comes to hiring seasoned sales professionals. Um, that's going to launch now. It's multiple choice. So please go ahead and be as uh, interactive with that one as possible. Now, what's changed? I mean, look, in, in my experience, I, I'm seeing organizations are, are no longer, John, they're no longer developing their salespeople um, due to salespeople, I guess, traditionally jumping ship every, perhaps every 12 to 24 months. Um, I think there's a bit of a cut back now. Uh, I'm seeing more, uh, so it's a cut in sales and training and development, or, or sorry, a cut in those, those particular sections, but there's certainly a less, um, less reasons to be, uh, training salespeople compared to before due to people jumping ship. And that's nothing new. There's, there's always been that jump ship from 12, from one year to two years. Um, so I guess when, when it comes to hiring skilled salespeople, companies are, are sort of looking for the, the more experienced people to get faster results. And thereby, um, I guess there, there's a lot more competition out there for the small number of top salespeople. So you've got that first point I've mentioned where organizations aren't necessarily developing salespeople like they used to, <coughs> excuse me. And then you've also got the fact that they're um, only hiring um, yeah, experienced salespeople to get faster results. So, I mean, given there's a shortage of, uh, of individuals, and, and my question to you, John, John, on that is, I mean, what, what impact do you think this shortage of uh, well-seasoned salespeople is having on organizational development and growth. And what what's your views on that? Well, let me just go back one step. I'll, mm. I'll add to what you just said. Please. Um, yes, companies aren't developing, aren't uh, investing in developing salespeople as much as they used to. They still are. Um, my concern is that uh, 
they'll have a budget for, for, for sales development, developing their salespeople, training and other, other activities. But the issue is uh, a lot of them, are, a lot of that training is on product. Uh, and there's less and less in my experience and what I'm seeing through all my clients, less and less investment in the skill of selling. Okay. Uh, and I want to put on the table right now, in my view, the, a salesperson's role is to sell uh, and to sell is helping a customer through a buying journey. Mm -hmm. It's not about flogging a product. And the more we train people on product and the less we train them on how to sell uh, and how to help customers through that buying journey, um, the, the, the more we're making a rod for our back as an organization. Our people need to know how to, how to sell much more than they know need to know detail about the product. We that said, yeah, go on. That said, um, the, the reason why, in my mind, that there's so there's less and less investment in developing salespeople is that the world's moving so fast, there's less loyalty by both companies and, and employees, mm -hmm. uh, and companies can't afford to invest too heavily in people that is going to keep moving around. Uh, and that's not people, the, the fault of the people, it's not the fault of the company, it's, it's just the way of the world now. So we need to get our minds around what all this means and mm -hmm. and and. The, the issue I've got is we're all competing for the best salespeople out there. Now, we all know the Pareto's law, 80-20. There's 20% of the salespeople that generate 80% of the sales out there. So everybody's competing for that 20%. Uh, and it's a dog's breakfast out there trying mm -hmm. to hire people. So we do need to develop people. And we all wonder what happens to the uh, the people, the, the rest of the 80%, right? You're the 20% killing it, hitting their numbers, and the other 80%... Um, yeah, I guess they need, they need to uh, they need to start improving. They're, they're right? churning and, and people are not yeah. looking after them there. I mean, yes, there's a certain amount of training and coaching mm -hmm. happening, but not enough to, to help those people get up to the, the level of professionalism they need to. So the point of this yeah. whole, whole webinar, uh, Matt, that you put on, and it's a great subject, is, is Thank how, you, John. As, yeah. as individuals, mm -hmm. how do we need to recognise that we need to do something about this? The company's not going to look after us. And yet we've got a career, we've got our own career to look after. We, we've got to take accountability yeah. for our own career. That's essentially the bottom line. Hey, so just reaching out to the audience. Um, if you've got, um, if, the, if the point on there on the poll is not, uh, or the answer isn't what you're looking for, or you've got a question on that, please uh, direct your questions into our chat box and we'll, uh, we'll come back to you on that very shortly, okay? But yeah, yeah, John, I agree. And, um, and, it, and if we don't, in a, and if, if, if salespeople aren't investing in themselves and salespeople aren't being invested in their own development, I guess um, what, what we need to understand is, I mean, I, 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 let, let's switch it around a little bit. Why aren't salespeople investing in their own development? Um, do you think it's laziness? Is it the expectation that the company should do it for them? Or, or maybe they don't know how to do it. I mean, what, what, why, why do you think salespeople aren't sort of going, oh, my God, I need to go and buy 20 books and I need to go and watch 20 podcasts every day or you know, every week or whatever it is. Um, why, why do you think that is? Well, first of all, a lot of people do. Yeah, we, yeah okay. we, Not everybody that don't. A lot of people invest very heavily in their own yeah. development. Um, it, it's, it, but it's also human nature. Um, mm. A lot of you know out there know that I'm a fanatical golfer. Mm -hmm. um, and I play golf yeah, three, four times a week. And, uh, and I wonder why I'm not getting better. You know, my handicap sat at 15 for the last 20 mm -hmm. years. Uh, I'd like to get it down to single figs, figures. I play a lot of golf. Why am I getting better? Well, the re reason is I haven't invested heavily in myself. Mm -hmm. I haven't got a lot of coaching. I haven't uh, studied it. I haven't mm -hmm. practiced. And, and that's another thing that I, I really get on the back of salespeople about. You need to practice. And the customers is not the place you practice all the time, mm. right? You need to practice before you get in front of the customer. It's like, uh, you know, if you had a, a, a soccer team and you put them all out there and you said, all right, we're going to play our first game next week. You know, here's a little bit of coaching. Now uh, be ready to play. And if they haven't practiced mm. and really honed those skills, then obviously they're going to be beaten uh, badly okay. on the on the on the course so we we the, the answer to your question is, is why why don't people develop a lot of people don't know how uh they haven't thought about it mm -hmm. they're too busy 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 all the time yeah and of course all we do is we're busy all the time is keep churning doing what we always done and we'll fail and wonder why we failed and we've never done any self-development we have to take mm. time out 
And sometimes that's very hard for a lot of us to do, but we need to manage our time and work out how to take time out to do some self-development. So, John, we got a question, or already rather a response from the poll from Ron Reid. So he finds that companies are investing in sales methodologies and ignore selling skills without the base selling skills. A method doesn't seem to deliver good outcomes. That, that's interesting. That's really well, I think that's essentially what I was saying before. Pretty a lot much, of companies, yeah. A lot of companies yeah. are, uh, uh, are unfortunately investing in, um, in, in my mind, the wrong thing for salespeople. Um, if, yeah. if, you're, if you're putting people through days of training of product training every year uh, and not mm. not putting the the equivalent amount or more mm -hmm. into sales training how to sell the you know, effective basic skills and then yep. the more uh, the more advanced skills then um, you're not helping your people and you're not helping mm. yourself well I, I personally john i i train my um uh, individual bdrs in uh, my bdrs individually um <clears throat> i just feel that the value add is so important even if it's only a few hours a week but my, my challenge has always been around if i give them any homework it's it's kind of never done it's more of the i'm always given the uh, emphasis of hey matt isn't that your job you know well, after work we have you know activities we have family and i'm like i get it um and i'll i'll train you but you've got to you got to learn as well, right? Don't think about this job. Think about your next job because in a year or two years, I don't want you to leave, but you probably may want to go and jump ship and find something that's above your ceiling that I can provide you. And the only way you're going to do that is to, is to just develop your own skills. So let's look at the results of the first poll quickly. Um, so it seems that yeah, the biggest challenge right now with our audience, 71% is a shortage of hard to find right fit people. Again, covering what we covered earlier, John, the, the, the 80% that are, are not hitting their number and the 20% that are killing it, right? So yeah, in, interesting. Um, we've got too expensive doesn't seem to be an issue. I, I have heard from some of my clients that hiring BDRs and salespeople is they're demanding higher salaries. So it doesn't seem to be a, an issue so much with our audience. Um, low retention. Well, I mean, we know why. There's a shortage of people. So people are competing for people and the salaries yeah. are coming, coming higher and higher. And that's another yeah. reason why yeah. we should be putting some of our funds into developing our own people rather than competing on that open market. Absolutely. And by the way, I, I really need to say a lot of people you hire might be top salespeople mm -hmm. in another business. Yeah. And when we come into our business, they fail. Uh, and part of that is, is the cultural fit. And we mm. need to make sure when we bring people in, they fit into our organization. But we also need to make sure we're giving them the, the frameworks and the tools and the, and the way we do business and, and make sure that's clarified and they work, can work within our machine. Very good. Um, I always find it interesting when I hire um, new salespeople and um, some of them will sort of sit there, get on with it and, um, you know, they, they'll, they'll, they'll do their usual six month tenure and, and, and build a name for themselves, build pipe. And others will wait maybe three or four weeks and sit down with me and say, look, I think it's time to give me a pay rise. And I kind of sit there and go, what? Hey, hang on a minute. Um, what's, what's going on here? And I, maybe it's a cultural thing on this side of the world. But um, yeah, no, it, it always used to blow, blow my mind away. I just thought the, six, the first six months, you know, at least three months, blow me away with how good you are. And then, you know, then we can, then we can talk, right? But um, yeah, interesting. So look, we're not getting any more questions. And so audience, if you want to, if you have any more questions on this particular subject, um, please, or on this key point that we're discussing right now, please chuck them into the box. And um, I do have my moderator with me today, but I don't think she's, uh, yeah, I think she's having some microphone issues at the moment anyway. Um, so we'll, we'll move on to the next talking point in a few seconds. Um, if there's no more questions that come through. All right. Or maybe, maybe just quickly, John, um, low, low retention. Um, that seems to be, that's around 36%. Not, 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 I mean, it's a challenge, but it's certainly a challenge from our audience. So they're not staying as long uh, as they should. But that, that's nothing new, right? That, that's been around for, for salespeople have been doing it since my time, 12, 13 years ago, working for tech companies. That was always, people would leave and they'd even come back to the same organization after they'd done two more just to get that pay rise. It was always a saying in the, in the and I'm not going to mention the name, in the tech company I worked in, that you leave this company, you go somewhere else and you come back and get a 30% pay rise because that's the only way you could get it. <laughs> they wouldn't give it to you internally, but anyway. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's a blight on the company you've left and come back to, isn't it? Uh, if they're not uh, 
if they're not doing what they can to retain their top people, yeah. then uh, they've got a problem. <laughs> no, they, they put a rule in actually after a couple of years, they said, you can't do that anymore. You can only come back to this company twice and then you can't come back anymore because <laughs> everyone was doing